All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of the uh, Chief Architect introduction series that once again, um, if you're in my class, I'll be giving a um, in-class lesson on. However, if you're outside of this class and you're following along, um, we're gonna specifically be focusing on the uh, roof setups. We're gonna set up uh, interior design and then also focus on floor coverings. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter video than the last time. Uh, last video was around 47 minutes, so I apologize for that, but there was a lot of things to explain, um, specifically if you aren't in this class. So what you can see here open up on the screen is our um, perspective full overview of what we created last video. So once again, if you haven't um, consumed the last video, that's the one you want to do first before you move on with this one. But what you can see once again is uh, their front view here, right? This is the south facing wall. Um, we have our front entrance. Everything is pretty much default colors at this moment, default materials and so forth. But you can see we have a, uh, a seven foot wide window in the front on the left. We have our standard entryway in the front on the right. It's asymmetrical and then we have a small window. Um, you can see that there are some interior framing where we were gonna put our bathroom, our master or only bedroom and then the large open floor living space specifically for the living room the kitchen and then the entryway um, and so we'll see kind of where this goes but once again the intent is here to show you how to use the um, the program not necessarily focus on the amazing design that we're doing here so I'm going to close this tab here and if you're just starting at this point from a different day this is kind of what it would look like if you just hit file open and um, continued where we left off so at this moment, we have 750 square feet of living space. We have um, an area designated that's going to be the, the bedroom. We have an area that's going to be designated as the bathroom. We have an area designated for the kitchen, a larger living space, and then more of an entryway where we're going to have different type of flooring material where your, your shoes and the weather that you bring inside from outside isn't necessarily going to get tracked in onto, let's say, a, um, a less durable surface here, possibly carpet or hardwood floor. So as, as I said, we're going to focus on um, a roof, we're going to focus on floor covering, and we're going to fill this space with um, library objects such as base cabinets, wall cabinets, uh, toilet, uh, sink, shower, uh, those kind of things, beds, um, and so forth. So here we go. Um, the first thing that I think would be best to tackle, let's talk about a roof. Um, your traditional gable roof looks like if you've seen Snoopy's doghouse. Um, I can kind of point to, I'm going to grab my print screen now that it's working. This is a gable, right? The blue triangle peak. If that was a vertical peak and we were looking square at it, that is the gabled peak. Um, it's a vertical triangle. The roof doesn't slope downward. It's a vertical section of the building. So um, we need to decide where we're going to place that versus... Um, the default where you're gonna have slope downward on all four um, walls here. So I think I'm gonna auto generate the roof by default just to show that there's a difference and then go and change the the wall setting so that we actually create what I intend. So um, to make roofs in Chief Architect it's actually really easy. You just double click this tool right here. Now we could drop it down you can see a large set of children menus or children tools but I'm just gonna uh, flat out just double click this tool here that you can see that I'm kind of circling here on the screen um, and at this point even without knowing specifically what you're going to be doing when you double click um, you have all of these options here Eve, Gable, the Rise, there's Angles there's different options here in terms of structure so if you're concerned about framing and so forth rafters and so forth and even the materials in terms of what they look like, right? So my roof is going to be shingled with these asphalt shingles. And once again, I haven't changed anything, and I'm not going to for this, this lesson. I'm just going to say OK at this point. Um, and then if you just click Build Roof, say OK. If I Shift K, you should see the roof. For some reason, it's not showing up. So I'm going to double check why that's not the case. Um, this checkbox, for some reason, was not checked. So you want to make sure that you check this here, where it says Build Roof Planes. 
if you were to modify your roof after the fact and you didn't want it to change, you would have this checked where it says retain manually drawn roof planes. Right? Auto rebuild roofs is also helpful some, sometimes. If you change the size of your building after you built the roof, the roof itself would automatically generate. At this point, auto rebuild roofs, um, they don't need to be on. We're not going to change the size of our building. However, um, in future videos, we probably will. So we want to make sure when you double click that tool, it looks as if Chief, Chief Architect 10 won't have this checked. So maybe if you're on X5 or any other versions, it could be. But make sure that this is checked. Okay. Um, right now we're going to be doing a 12 and 8 or an 8 and 12 roof pitch. For every horizontal 12 inches, we'll be going up or down 8 inches. So when I say OK, you can see the 8 and 12 ratio here. Okay, so every vertical 8 inches we go, we go horizontal 12, and you can see that it slopes downward on all four walls. And that's the point I'm trying to make here by doing this before I set the settings the way I want. This is not the roof I want, but rain would run down that direction, this direction, this direction, and that direction. And then there is a horizontal ridge right here, right? And then there's the angled ridges here and so forth, right? Um, water would slope this direction as well. So three-dimensionally, you'll probably get a better view of this. So if I shift K at this point, you can kind of see what it created. Now, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for. However, by default, without really thinking too much about what you're doing, you've built gutters, right? You have asphalt shingles, you have a ceiling, and there really wasn't much to do in terms of um, effort to create this. It's not what I want, but once again, Chief Architect can do some really easy things for you um, with relative ease. So we're going to fix this because I want, I want the roof specifically to have two gables, and the gables themselves are going to come out in terms of a ridge here, and then there's going to be a vertical peak kind of coming out in that aspect. And we're going to do the exact same thing out this direction as well. Right? I'm just going to drawing a wireframe as you can kind of see. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, and this is a gable, right? And then that's a gable. We've already talked about this in class. If you're following this in sequence and it's May at the time you're consuming this, you know what a gable is. So how do we get Chief Architect to do it? It's pretty simple, um, but it's done by wall definitions. So as you can see, we have roof planes here. We could delete them, but we're just going to ignore them. We're going to click on the exterior wall, the vertical, let's say, east-facing vertical wall, two-dimensionally speaking vertically. And I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to grab the second wall here. So just to show you, I held Shift. I used the white arrow tool. I selected this one first. I held Shift, and then I selected the second wall. They're both selected together, and the reason why is I want them both to have the same settings. You could do this individually, but it's twice as much work. So I'd like to work kind of smart and not necessarily harder than I need to. So I have these two walls selected. They're gray, as you can see. right? We're going to go down over to this bottom left corner, as you can see where I'm circling. And we're going to click. And there's a lot of definitions here specific to the walls that I've selected. Right? We can change the interior wall coverings, the exterior wall coverings, and all that. And we're going to do that a different uh, time in the video. But specifically, we're going to click on the roof, and we're going to say that these are gabled, a gabled wall, um, where you see right here, full gable wall. And there's a whole bunch of other options, and I'll encourage you to kind of explore what those look like. But you're going to click full gable wall. These walls will have that property passed into the auto-generated roof when we create it a second time, and then we'll create what exactly we want. Okay, So once again, just to review, with your walls selected, you select the door, it opens up the options, you then go to the roof tab, and then once you go to the roof tab, you're going to select the um, full gable wall. And when you do that and say OK, the last thing you need to do is just rebuild your roof again. So I'm just going to say OK at this point. Nothing has changed. It's pretty uneventful at this moment. So you're going to double click your roof plane tool again. You're going to check this box that allowed us to create the roof in the first place. Right? Remember the first time I didn't have it done? Okay. You're just going to say OK at this point. And take note of the ridge lines on the roof when you say OK. You will no longer see 
the roof lines showing like this. Those lines are going to go away and you should see a ridge that horizontally runs east to west of your building. So I'm going to press escape, say OK, and at this point what I just explained is visible on the screen. We have a horizontal ridge, right, and the entire roof plane pitches down this direction towards the north and then pitches down this direction towards the south. Right, if this was a northern hemisphere building like I'm intending this to be, this south facing um, roof plane would be probably the best location if we were going to put solar panels on this roof. Because once again, you're facing towards the equator on that, that direction versus the opposite. So I'm going to do shift K again, and I'll show you. There's our gabled roof. Right, that's the peak I want. We have an overhang. And the overhang is going to keep the building dry for when it's raining and there's no gutter on that side. And then you have over here the gutters that auto-generate in the settings. If you don't like those gutters and you wanted copper gutters or different color gutters or different sizes, all of those options are apparent in the, I believe, the roof tool that I just double-click here. Right? There's gutter caps and gutters and the shape of the gutter. I can replace them to different gutters if I really wanted. Um, I can select over to here to gutters and you can see the different shapes, right? If I wanted something a little bit more fancy and so forth. There's no three-dimensional view sadly, but you can kind of see the profile shape of the different gutters here, right? So if I want to do something a little bit more decorative, I could say okay. Um, I could change the color, I can change the size and so forth and I believe I'd have to rebuild the roof again to do that. Um, because if I go to Shift K, I probably won't see those options yet. Oh, I'm wrong. Uh, you can actually see that decorative gutter versus the square one. Doesn't look like it's going to hold much water, and it kind of looks silly. But anyway, the point is just to show you that you do not have to do in the assignment. I'm going to Control Z and undo that. I don't know if there we go. There's our regular square gutter. We're just going to keep it default for this video. So now that we've tackled roofs, we're going to tackle the interior design quickly. It looks as if um, I do not see a recording length. It looks like I'm about 12 minutes in, so I'm not going to intend this to go beyond much more than 20 minutes. So at least I hope. So let's close our perspective overview. We're looking at the inside of the uh, the building, and let's just place um, some basic base cabinets for a kitchen. So. If you drop this down, we have base cabinets and wall cabinets. That's exactly what they would be described as. The wall cabinets hang off of a wall. The base cabinets are where your kitchen countertop is going to be placed. And then full height would be going from the floor to the ceiling. Something where you'd see like a, you know, there's no countertop there. It just vertically extends to the, to the ceiling. Um, you can do custom countertops and all that, and we'll work on those stuff in, in other videos. Well, let's just do a base cabinet. And I'm going to focus on a simple base cabinet that's in a corner. This is probably the most easily missed step um, for placing base cabinets. So I'm going to start with this one first. I want to place a corner cabinet right here. As you know that corner cabinets are a little bit different than um, square on cabinets. So if you look at my mouse, the base cabinet is facing downward south and to the left of it there should be something, to the right of it should be something, it should be against the wall. Um, if I put it over here, now it's facing uh, the east, but they're not corner cabinets. That's just like perpendicular wall cabinets or base cabinets. If I put my mouse directly in the corner and I have my snaps on like I described in the previous video, you can see that the wall cabinet, the base cabinet, sorry, has changed. That looks like a corner, right? The corner has been cut off. It fits nested in the corner. It's deeper than you would say a standard base cabinet. And so if I click, it places it in the schedule number that says DCB36R. Um, that's the schedule number for that cabinet. It's different than, let's say, the B24R. So now you're just going to place some base cabinets along the line. Now we're going to place a sink in one of these, probably in front of this window here. And structurally inside here, you won't be able to place a sink because there's all kinds of framing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to delete one of these. And we're going to make this base cabinet um, at least 
let's make it 36 inches wide. Okay, so this is gonna be a different schedule number. It's manufactured differently, but we need a space to put a sink. So we're gonna click the two. We're gonna type in three. And I'm curious to see what direction it actually um, grows. I'm hoping it goes downward um, south. So if I press enter, it does, although don't specifically like its location. So I'm gonna actually make it four feet. And this is something, if you were gonna actually build this home, you'd probably wanna double check your base cabinets. Um, but I'm gonna drag this down because it's definitely overlapping at this point and snap it and just kind of optically see, um, do I like the placement? And it actually fits the, the three foot wide window, right? With four feet in terms of on center location. I'm gonna go back to my base cabinet and get a default 24, snap it to here. There's going to be drawers, right? There's drawers for your silverware, your pots and pans and so forth below. Future videos will go into how to detail and change those if you want specific drawers and sizes, but we're gonna go with the default for today. Um, at this point, we have this edge of the kitchen. We could then place storage over here, maybe full height cabinets and so forth, but let's take a look at what we have. So you wanna look inside your building, and we haven't done this yet in any video yet, so we're gonna drop down these tools at the top here that say flo full floor camera, and then you have floor camera, and then you have perspective. There's our shift K that we've been working on, but we're gonna go to floor, full floor camera, and I'm gonna put myself in the building. I'm gonna click and drag, and where I clicked first is where I would be standing, and then when I drag, that's my first person perspective and how wide my uh, point of view is gonna be. So if I let go, you can kind of see at this point we have some things that aren't perfect yet, right? We have a countertop that's literally intersecting our window and there's some you know, problems here. Our door and so forth, the door jams or the uh, trim itself is running into the, uh, the cabinet. But for the most part, we have a fairly well put together small kitchen. Um, as you can imagine, what we need in the kitchen would be obviously our range, our stove, a sink, um, those would be the basics and probably some sort of storage. If you were just to be given this in the kitchen, you'd probably be cursing the architect who designed this because there's no place to store really anything in terms of food and pantry and so forth. So there's not a lot of thought put into this building. This is just to kind of get you to understand how to use the program, not necessarily what to design. That's an entirely different aspect. So um, actually, I'm gonna go back to the floor, full floor and I'm gonna put myself in the kitchen and three-dimensionally you can move things around which is kind of neat. So I'm gonna click my white arrow, I'm gonna click on this window and I can actually drag this middle, um, middle handle upward vertically and I can position this window what, wherever it specifically looks like it would optically fit interior wise. Now this might change the outside view of the home but once again I'm not really focusing on design aspects for appeal just mechanics of how to, to make this program work for you. You can think for yourself. Um, this is how you would change your perspective. All right? So you're just gonna come up here and change these tools here. This will pan your perspective. This is like moving left or right. All right? And then zoom will get you closer, further away. This cabinet probably should be a little bit skinnier. So I'm gonna click it and hopefully just drag this in as you can see here, oops, now we're outside the building, um, that the counter backsplash is actually lined up right with the door jam. So this, this actually works. Before it did not work, now it works. Putting that tiny little piece of trim in, if you were building this, would not be the nicest. You might wonder why that's here, um, and maybe curse the designer who did it. But let's switch back to mouse orbit. So at this point, um, we have our countertop that actually works with the door placement that we chose. I'm getting a little lost with my view as you can see and that's going to happen with you so just close the screen and then go back to your full floor and just position yourself back in the building and then drag your perspective of what you're looking at and at that point what you can do is um, kind of inspect where you want that specific window to be. Now, I, it's not perfect but this is where I want the sink so we're going to go and place the sink over here using the uh, library browser. 
and uh, maybe over here on this wall we can put like an oven and then maybe to divide the living room from the kitchen we can put another island or and then put our range top so we're gonna actually have an oven and a range be separate from each other versus a combination that you traditionally would see um, so let's close our three-dimensional view and let's go type in sync so over here in your library viewer your library viewer is right here so if, if you close all of this and you don't have it any longer which is very likely over here at the top you can turn it on looks like books you're gonna click it okay I'm just gonna circle this again just in case you're watching it's right here you want to make sure it's checked and you're gonna come over to here and I'm just gonna type in sync And you can kind of take a look at the various sinks that appear. Now, not every sink is appropriate for what we want. Um, we want like a drop-in sink. And if you take a look here, this is more of a tub, um, more of an apron. And you can see three-dimensionally. If you want to see more three-dimensional view, just drag this up. And you can kind of see what, what it is before you decide to choose from it, right? This is more of a bathroom style. And so we're going to type in kitchen sink would probably help, a double sink this looks more appropriate as long as it's not you know bigger than 48 inches and that's pretty pretty unlikely um, if you notice there's no faucets so if you don't want to source faucets and put them against the wall or click on where they should go find a sink with a faucet already in it it's gonna save you a lot of time so you're just gonna take this now that it's selected if you notice my cursor looks like a sink and if I come over to here I can click on this base cabinet and it will place that sink in that cabinet Hypothetically, it should every it should work. So I'm going to go and take a look and make sure that I didn't contradict myself. I'm going to switch back to floor camera, drag like I'm standing in the kitchen looking at the sink, and as you can tell, the sink is there and life is good. You can hopefully appreciate at this point that the base cabinet needed to be four feet wide, right? Because once again, the sink itself is three-dimensional and it goes down inside the cabinet like this and just like if you were to physically build a kitchen you would need the space for that so you'd have to buy a special base cabinet to accommodate a sink you'd have to cut the hole in you drop the sink or mount it from the bottom up and seal it and so forth if you're an architect you might not be doing this kind of work but you should at least understand how this stuff um, is built and obviously that takes time and experience and this might be the first experience you've ever had I encourage you to go look under your sink in your kitchen. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about, right? You would see you'd put like cleaning supplies and sponges and whatnot, paper towels and so forth underneath your sink here. And even some of the base cabinets, this little handle opens up and it angles out and you can put like sponges and all kinds of utensils for washing dishes and so forth. We're not going to throw a dishwasher in for the sake of time, um, but it's very similar. You just type in like if I typed in dishwasher, you could see that there's a variety of dishwashers I could probably slap in a base cabinet. I'm going to hit Control Z. I don't know what's going to happen if I just click. There you go. Dishwasher. So that was actually a little bit simpler than I expected. Um, so if you want to choose to put the dishwasher in, that's fine. If you don't, I don't care. But you can see that it definitely worked. No storage now. No, no uh, specific drawers or anything like that. So we have a dishwasher. We have a sink. I'm going to close my three-dimensional view. Um, at this point, let's throw in maybe additional base cabinets that go this direction. And maybe I can throw in a corner. Doesn't look like I can. So this is a little bit of a tricky part. There's no wall here. So how are you going to put in a corner if you want like an island or a breakfast bar here? Um, I'm going to probably copy and paste this one. Okay, so this specific one you want to select, hit Control C. Deselect by just clicking in the gray space on the left. Hit Control V as in Victor. And you're going to get this weird looking arrow in between two rectangles. Just click and drop it. It's facing the wrong direction. So to rotate, there's this triangle that's apparent when you select an object. And this is, um, you could either move the label like I just did. You're going to look for another triangle. So here's another triangle. And if you notice, it's snapping to convenient angles and if you remember the last video I had snap to angles turned on this is why that's important at this point 
I can vertically bring it down and horizontally bring it over and then vertically bring it up. Chief Architect does not like to um, do diagonals unless you're holding down the control key on the keyboard. So just go vertically down, horizontally over. My floor covering for my kitchen is a little bit on the small side at this point, so I'm going to drag this specific wall down so that it lines up with my kitchen cabinets. And then I can throw in like a range, so I'm going to put in some more base cabinets here and maybe here. And then if I click this one, actually I'm going to delete this, let's make this one bigger make this uh, 48 inches, 4 feet. The depth might need to increase. We're going to go over to here and type in range top. It's just range. Uh, and that's our appliance. Let's just type in cooktop. Okay, so we have electric cooktop. As you can see, it's just like a piece of glass with burners that appear underneath it. Um, this one looks like a downdraft so it sucks all of the moisture and, and uh, smells of the food that you're cooking out. You have to obviously think about where the plumbing would be. Are you going to have a hood and stuff like that. Um, duct work. This is natural gas. I'm just going to go simple electric and I'm just going to click on this base cabinet and it places it there. Now you're going to notice maybe it's facing the wrong direction. Um, all of the controls would be standing on the opposite side so you don't want to necessarily um, have this put backwards so you can click and rotate it if it shows up backwards but at this point um, you can kind of see where we're at there's no oven so we would probably have to put some cabinets over here to throw in the oven I'm gonna leave that for you to figure out because at this point you get the idea of how to do this just do more of the same by searching in your library, placing base cabinets or full cabinets and see. You can also just like I said, type in range. Um, and this will be the oven plus the cooktop combined. And if you don't like this here, you know, you could slap that thing there. And obviously this is a terribly designed kitchen in terms of the way that I'm showing at the moment, but I'm just kind of giving you options. I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna leave it. Possibly in the future video, I'll make this look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna leave this. That's our kitchen in terms of base cabinets. Now wall cabinets are a little bit different. They're going directly on top of what you see here. So you're gonna drop the, um, the base cabinet tool down and you're gonna look for wall cabinets. Same scenario, you're gonna click the corner, place it. Click the wall, place it. I'll make this wider and have this go over. Um, I'm not gonna have yeah, I'll have a skinny base cabinet here. We have a window, right? So um, you can't obviously have a wall cabinet go against your window because you're not going to be able to look out. So I'm going to leave it as this. And at this point, I can grab this wall cabinet. It's designated with a W. And you can just drag it until it no longer intersects with the, uh, the window. And it still might. So we're going to view this in 3D. Same thing. I'm going to drag this up. So it snaps to the window. I'm gonna drag this one so it snaps to the wall. And now we're gonna go and view our full floor and you're gonna see that there's wall cabinets on the wall, okay? So now we have wall cabinets for your, you know, your dishes and so forth. And we have a large empty space above here. I'm not gonna get into this today, but we could put a soffit up there because that's only gonna collect dust. And um, if we were to make the wall cabinets any taller, you're gonna need a ladder or a step stool to go up there and use that. So it's kind of wasted space. So we fill it with um, an architectural aesthetic, but we're not gonna focus on that today. So we're gonna close. Our kitchen's essentially done. We did wall cabinets, base cabinets, some appliances, a sink. Um, we extended our floor so that it matches. So if I, I don't want a hardwood floor in my kitchen. Have it selected. Click this open door option menu, just like we've been doing since uh, the beginning of using this. And we're gonna try to find the materials tab right here. And if I click, you can click on stuff even if you don't know what you're clicking on. If you find something that visually matches, well, that's it. So this visually matches my floor. I want to select different materials and 
this is where you could spend days looking at stuff, right? If this was your house, you would obviously care a lot more than if you're sitting in my lab. So now I'm going to go to flooring. Um, I don't think carpet in a kitchen is the best idea for a number of reasons that you can imagine. Just like carpet in a bathroom is probably a bad idea. Um, so we're going to go and take a look at... I don't, I don't like what we have here. We have carpet, rug, safety, vinyl, wood flooring. I'm looking for tile, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to go down to tile alphabetically. Now we have patterned, random, solid, stone. I'm going to go to stone. And our textures are missing. Beautiful. Okay. Um, that's not a good thing. And I don't know if that's specific to my computer. So I can't really show you how nice this stone material looks like because my textures are missing. Um, let's see if marble is missing. Yeah, it looks like all my textures are just gone. So if it, they, they're not gone on your computer, select what you like and say OK. It's simple as that. Um, but stone's not there. That's terrible. Um, OK, there we go. So these, these will show themselves if they're actually loaded into your computer. So I'm just going to leave dark slate and say OK. I'm going to say OK here. This floor should have that uh, floor texture. And let's take a look at our kitchen. It's really mad at me right now. This is a specific to my computer, so just ignore it and say OK. Um, as you can see, my floor has a specific material that's different than the living space. Now that I've shown you that, I'm not going to go through and force you to watch me change this area's floor covering to something that logically makes sense. It should be more durable, something that you could clean better that might have uh, the outside materials like mud and dirt that get tracked in. Uh, something that can withstand that a little bit better than your living space here. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to let you decorate your living room and living space um, how you see fit using the library browser, but literally you find stuff and place it. View your full floor perspective and tell, you know, ask yourself, does this look good? Does this look appropriate? Is this in the way of the window? You might want to move the window. That's your choice. Um, but at this point, I'm going to leave you to um, play with what I've shown you in that aspect. The bedroom and bathrooms, the bathroom is literally the same thing. You search for objects in the library browser and you place them. You might want a window in the bathroom, so you would probably place the window right over here. Um, you probably don't want a window on your interior walls because nobody wants to see inside the bathroom. Um, and nobody in the bathroom wants people to see inside. So take care of that. And same thing with the bedroom. So the, your job, the next video that will probably be posted, We'll focus on the exterior of the building and how it looks as well as landscaping. So when you get to video three, your bathroom, bedroom, floor coverings, and living room should be finished before you do that. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments or ask me directly in class.